You'll be fine, Edna. You can hover along up on the surface while I take the low road. Did I ever tell you about the time I walked across the bottom of the Potomac River? I did. Not as deep or wide as the Mississippi, but my armor's airtight, and it held up just fine for a little walk underwater. As long as the mighty Mississippi doesn't have any giant river monsters, I'll be fine. Not sure I want to go back through Luddite territory. I lost track of what King Ludd got up to after we passed through St. Louis all those years ago. I'd rather face the giant catfish and crawdaddies than fight my way across any of the bridges. I'll be in touch by radio the whole time. When the Brotherhood came east with lions, we sent a couple of scouts under the river like this. The Enclave must have just flown straight across when they came through. They brought vertebrates with them from California. Those things almost flew the Enclave to victory twice. We scared the hell out of the Brotherhood in San Francisco back in the 40s. The Shi were unsettled too, and the Hobologists were jealous that someone else had rediscovered the secret of flight. Gah! Give me a second here, Edna. Made a friend down here. Oh. Slimy little. Gotcha now. Yeah. I'm fine. There are giant mutant paddlefish down here. Razor sharp nose blades and clawed flippers adapted for walking on the riverbed. I ran across a school of them, or a pack. What was I on about before? Right, the Enclave. Haven't been much of a problem since the fight at the old Air Force base. Finally, one you haven't heard before. You ever wonder why Liberty Prime wasn't functioning when the Brotherhood brought him up to Boston? It's because the Enclave destroyed him in the Capital Wasteland not long after the battle for Project Purity. It took the scribes ten years to put him back together again. In the back wind times, they filled the skies with floating machines called satellites. Remember that solar death ray we had out in the Mojave? Yeah. That wasn't even the worst thing up in the sky from the old days. The Enclave had a satellite that helped them organize their East Coast operations ten years ago. We didn't know about it until they used the thing to rain down missiles from the sky on our giant robot. Warning! Warning! Rail Chinese orbital strike imminent! All personnel should reach minimum safe distance immediately. We tracked them to a pre-war Air Force base outside of Washington, D.C. All kinds of toys there. And they're up to all of the Enclave's old schemes even decades after their talking deathclaw fiasco. They were still trying to find a way to tame those creatures and use them in giant guard dogs or guard lizards. Didn't turn out any better for them this time around. Lions unleashed the Brotherhood on that base. I was part of a team sent to distract the Enclave from our secret strike force. While we were charging headlong across the runway, eating Enclave Plasma. That kid from Vault 101 and their companions were sneaking into the mobile command base that controlled the Enclave satellite. They aimed the orbital array to fire right on the Enclave's position, and within a few minutes, the Enclave were homeless for the third time in 20 years. They gave us a little time to clear out, of course.
Well, hello again. We're back on the proper side of the wasteland. We can hope we left the Enclave behind on the east side of the river, too. Last I saw them was a former Enclave soldier when I was up in New England. He joined that Children of Adam cult. Seemed like a man who traded one cult for another. The rest of the East Coast branch has probably degenerated into just another gang of raiders in fancy armor. You know, that Air Force base. That's the same base where your cousin Eddie was built. And not longer after they made him, they built you. But that is a story for another day. <laughs>